all, and welcome back to another edition of Geek Out with Perry. Our last video covered the data protection topic, and we had a lot of great comments and questions from you regarding Perry's last video and blog post. So let's get to geeking out and address your questions. So Perry, one of the questions that we got was basically that replication isn't the end-all be-all for data protection, and that it, it replicates the current state of things, so what it happens if there's corruption in the database or if a user hard deletes their entire mailbox? What happens then? Well, we totally agree. Um, uh, replication by itself, uh, especially uh, very synchronous replication, doesn't come close to solving all the scenarios in which you could be facing data loss. And uh, the, the possibility of replicating um, uh, the exact things you don't want to replicate uh, arises. So uh, that's why we actually spent a lot of time working on a set of features mm -hmm. to protect your data from uh, the variety of cases. Um, so we've broken down um, here uh, into a set of sources of potential data loss, right? Okay. The, the basic one is fundamental hardware failures, right? Your whole server going down, um, a disk controller, a disk drive, or individual corruption on disk drives, mm -hmm. or in fact, corruption anywhere in the uh, um, uh, file system beneath exchange, right? All of these are well protected by our replication scheme. Okay. All right? This is better than replication that happens at lower levels because it protects us uh, anything below an exchange uh, logical right uh, because we can actually check that the integrity of the data that's written on the two sides is uh, consistent. Okay. Okay? So we think we're firmly um, uh, protected uh, and better protected than backups in this space. But what happens if you come along and you delete yeah. an email and you want to get it back? Mm -hmm. um, okay, well, uh, we've had for a long time uh, this feature called uh, Dumpster. Okay. Uh, that is intended to uh, enable you to get your data back. And it isn't just a user doing this. IT pros uh, historically have found ways of deleting in user data or whole mailboxes by mistake. Mm -hmm. At the dumpster level, you can... Uh, after something is hard deleted, you can uh, get it back. Um, in fact, the end user can get it back through Outlook UI. Okay. Uh, and just so that people are clear about this, because sometimes they think we're talking about the deleted items folder, uh, we're not. We're talking about a different level of protection. If you start with an item in your inbox and you hit delete, it goes into your deleted items. If you go in there and clean out your deleted items, yeah. it still exists. This is when it goes into dumpster. At this point, uh, the, the uh, item is not normally seen in Outlook, but there is UI in Outlook that allows you to go and recover deleted yep. items and return this item to any folder that you want in yep. its original condition. Mm -hmm. We've extended this in Exchange, for, uh, Exchange 2010 so that even if a user goes in and gets into this UI, which is very rare, and cleans it out, um, the item will still ex uh, exist in a sort of extended dumpster folder that's only accessible by the IT pro. And at that point, if they phone up a uh, uh, help desk, they can st uh, um, the IT pro can get it back for them. Okay. And this so is, there's another uh, layer. There's another layer. Uh, so um, this uh, is, the we think, the best way of protecting against accident deletes, both of large chunks of data, um, whole mailboxes and that sort of thing, as well as... Uh, individual items that people accidentally delete and want to get back. Um, we do think that the, uh, uh, the company needs to set policies, and they effectively do that okay. right now with uh, uh, how long they retain their log files for and how, back they're, how far back they're prepared to go. But it's very cost effective to think about weeks or months of dumpster interval, uh, especially if you're providing people with a large mailbox. You can think of that cost increment as, if I'm giving people three years of retention, and say three months of dumpster, the dumpster overhead is on the order of 10% of your storage costs. Okay. Because we've dramatically dropped the cost of storage, this is a really cost-effective system. Mm -hmm. And you'll pay for it simply by uh, the lack of uh, work you need to do to go and recover from uh, folders when people have accidentally deleted stuff. You can just show them the UI. You can cut down help desk costs the next time they do this, uh, as well as all that onerous workflow of recovering from tape, restoring onto a server, copying the data out, and moving on. Very expensive workflow. Okay. Okay. 
But that's not all that we think uh, people need to worry about. There's also corruption. this idea of corruption. Um, we think this should be an extremely rare case. As I said, most cases, in fact, virtually every case for corruption that customers are seeing today are really some form of hardware corruption um, that's going on. But you can imagine that uh, we have some bad bug in exchange uh, that uh, did something very weird with the data that looks consistent at the physical level, mm -hmm. but uh, means you can't access a folder or a message or something like that. Um, to handle that case, and the case of really sort of big IT pro screw-ups, there's the feature called lag copy. Okay. This is sort of the breaking case uh, uh, feature and allows you to return to a point in time um, by um, rolling forward the set of logs to the point in time you want. Essentially what it is is you've got one copy of your system mm -hmm. in which the logs are copied to it but not replayed carefully, right? Okay. And this lets you uh, um, uh, allows you to have sort of a time machine effect in which you can go back say to last week and return the server to the exact state it was in the, at that point in time and uh, take a look and copy data out of it and that sort of thing. So the combination of these things we think uh, provides a very complete story for protecting your data. We think it's far more complete than backups, leaves far fewer data holes and is dramatically cheaper. More importantly, it actually allows you to have large amounts of data. Great. So that sounds really good. So the second question we got was that SQL has been doing log shipping for a really long time, but they still do backups. Um, the question was really about trust in replication, if we can really trust that lag copy since SQL still does backups. OK, so there's, there's several things. One, um, the, uh, um, the characteristics of uh, the email application that drives us in the state is just the very large amounts of data that people are talking about, okay. right? There are basically no line of business applications built on SQL in which the intention is to store many, several many gigabytes per user across your entire company, okay. right? It really is a massive amount of data. For scenarios like that, it is, uh, it's those scenarios in which backups become uh, really difficult to scale up. If you're talking about databases that have, you know, a terabyte, and that's the whole deployment, it's actually quite uh, feasible to think about having a backup strategy. Okay. So one of the things is uh, the constraints on the problem drive us to a different story. The second thing is doing this really requires application level features to make the story complete. Mm -hmm. It isn't just the jet engine or the database engine in exchange that enabled this. It is the set of features that pull together uh, the whole story, including our archive story. So what if a customer wants to back up for compliance and retention reasons or wants to recover some mail that has been sent four, five, six years ago? What would a customer do then? Well, uh, we, there's an additional set of features that are around our uh, 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 archive retention and policy enforcement uh, um, scenarios. And uh, we're running out of space on the whiteboard, so we'll probably need to do that in a, in a different talk. Yeah, that'll be great. So thank you very much for your Great comments and questions. Keep the feedback coming, and as promised, we'll address them. We'll post another video in the next few weeks so you can geek out with Perry again soon.